Hello my soccer universe to a slightly different Bundesliga review. I haven't done one since September, I think after Leverkusen uh, drew Bayern 2-2, kind of cementing their status as possibly the only challengers um, and have relied on short videos. I actually want to do now a little bit more of a general feel of how the Bundesliga is going than going uh, really on a match by match basis, although I will give you a quick review of the last match day but I wanna try to do this now I give you weekly updates if I get to it about the Austrian Bundesliga and Serie A and then one bonus league uh, and we rotate it through since we just had the Klassiker I think it's a good time to also look at the Bundesliga right there uh, so I will do it. I will talk about a few teams, how they have been doing so far. I am wearing Leverkusen. We will talk a whole lot about Leverkusen for sure, because they're probably one of the most exciting teams in Europe at this moment. And the great job that Xabi Alonso has done. You will see the results from the past rounds rotating through. And then at the very end, we'll talk the current uh, past round of the past weekend. But we also have to get the German Cup in because there was interesting stuff as well, which is a little bit conditioned uh, what happened before, but I want to keep this to the very end. So join me for the ride. I am making this as an experiment and let's get going. So uh, league leaders currently are Leverkusen and Leverkusen are still more or less perfect. The only time they dropped points was in Munich at Bayern, a game that they almost won in a way so uh, that's something uh, to really look out for they are playing an exciting uh, brand of football uh, with the types of Boniface, Grimaldo and especially Florian Wirtz up front it is really exciting they have also a little bit more solidity through Grani Chaka uh, but it's very much a team built in Xabi Alonso, Alonso's uh, image if you would like and he might as well be one of the hottest coaches at this moment uh, with many uh, big clubs vying for him, I would say Real Madrid, maybe Bayern Munich, maybe Liverpool, not so much, but I think Real Madrid definitely eyeing Xavi Alonso, and as I hear, he has a clause in his contract that he could, with one of his former big clubs, he could always um, beget if there's a um, fine paid to Leverkusen but Leverkusen seem to be the real deal and they're the only real challengers to Bayern Munich a Bayern Munich team that still has a really good record eight to eight wins and two draws and the two draws came against Leverkusen and against Leipzig so teams that you would think they can actually draw with but it has not been all smooth sailing as we'll see they're already out of the German Cup in a rather embarrassing fashion um, the squad depth seems to be a little bit thin and yes they had to rely on Sven Ulreich um, also being uh, in in his squad now uh, Neuer is coming back they might give them a little more defensive solidity uh, they are missing definitely a little bit in midfield they're thin on defender so uh, that's where Thomas Tuchel has to dig in deep I think that the strategy of Bayern Munich at this moment is um, let's keep in the running and then let's look at the January tra transfer window when we may sign someone because what we want to do is we want to win not only the championship, we want to win the Champions League and you have to get hot in April in order to win that one. Maybe March and, and so on. For now, we, know we just need to stay in the running. Uh, what's positive is that Harry Kane has already 15 goals after 10 rounds. No other Bundesliga player has ever done that. And scoring some uh, incredible goals in there as well, uh, like the... A goal that he scored against Darmstadt on the past weekend from uh, way past the halfway line. Looking it out, uh, one game that was really, really, really odd. Uh, where, you know, they first lose Kimmich early, early on, which they have to plug the holes in midfield. But then Darmstadt get twice a red card for very similar offenses. Uh, and then it was nil nil at the half and then it's an 8 nil route at the end. Well, a 10 against 9. It was a really, really odd game, but overall Bayern looking really good. And when we look at the last round, uh, round where they beat them Dortmund after being eliminated in the cup, and we'll talk about that classic a little, little bit later on, Bayern seem to be, uh, you know, just getting it going, keeping on there. Uh, as for Dortmund, and yes, after the Classica, it doesn't look good. Again, we'll talk a, bit, a little bit later. Dortmund look a little bit more solid uh, before. They started really, really bad in the season uh, with games that you barely could watch, and it's still not uh, good watching. However, 
uh, they can grind out results, which might be another um, feather in their cap. It's just not enough. I think that both Leverkusen and Bayern are just a step ahead of them. Uh, and after losing out on the championship last season, I don't think they have enough in the tank to continue uh, going. Similar for Leipzig, who are oddly flat this season. I mean, uh, six wins, two draw, two losses. They have fifth place. Yes, very much in touch with uh, Dortmund and Stuttgart. But uh, Le Leverkusen and Bayern are already way ahead of them. Um, Leipzig shows some weird frailties here, 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 there. Well, they can hang with the big boys for sure. They had some big wins like against Stuttgart and against Köln, but then they also have some odd losses in there. Speaking of Stuttgart, they have been the surprise of the uh, season so far, especially on the heels of having Girassi scoring crazily. But now he has been two uh, games injured and suddenly they are not winning anymore. Still, a very, very good start to the to, to, to season. It's a team that plays exci excitingly and maybe they can find someone else who scores the goals on the weekend. They probably could have put the game in a different direction. Um, but yeah, it's one of the biggest surprises this season, one of the biggest positive surprises, which leads us to the negative surprises, whereas, of course, Union Berlin, who have now an incredible, I think, 10 or uh, if not il no, 11 games lost in a row and the trend is continuing they had two wins two starts as in ever since it's going downhill and on one side it's kind of regression to the mean because uh, uh union have been definitely been overachieving uh over the past few years um but on the other side it's a little bit surprising because they had such a good run that suddenly to see them flounder, uh, floundering i have the feeling that the leadership is still relatively calm they know very well where they came from and maybe this will be a grind out season where you just want to avoid the drop and they have enough quality i mean heck there is a Gosens, there's a Bonucci in there. Uh, this should get going, but that might also be the trouble for Union Berlin. That they don't... They added a little bit depth and they added a relatively good players that might not actually feel Union, if you would like. And that might be a trouble coming in. I also see not think good, good things going for Kern. You know, they had the transfer ban. Uh, losing players cannot get any play, play players in. It's a rough season for them. Uh, there is life in, in this team. They definitely uh, should have had a few more points than they have gotten so far. And I think as long as the team is buying into Stefan Baumgart, I think the team can still avoid relegation, but it will be a relegation uh, scrap. Um, for Mainz, yeah, as we will see, they got a big win on the weekend. But Mainz have been a really, really bad team. I mean, the way they get ousted out of the cup, also not looking good. And that's a team that seems to be in trouble. Of the promoted teams, and you know, they're not really great. I mean, for me, uh, Heidenheim, Bochum and Darmstadt, despite getting results and having more points than the th three teams that we've talked so far, uh, those are teams that I always look at a little, a little bit in danger. And I... Don't know really what to think about Gladbach and Werder Bremen, to be honest. Uh, those are also teams that kind of are in there. Then we have kind of these, uh, I don't know, maybe they can push for Europe teams, uh, which is Hoffenheim, who have also a relatively good season. We have Frankfurt that have only lost once so far, but have also five draws in the running. I think if Frankfurt can gel, this might be a team, and I've been saying it last season when they were under Oliver Glass and now under Top Müller, uh, it might be a team that could get a run together and maybe then even push for at least a Europa League spot, uh, if not uh, going further. And given how the cup is falling, that's something they might be eyeing as well. Freiburg is having also a little bit like Union Berlin. Um, after two really good, good seasons, it's kind of a little bit falling back, but not as far as Union Berlin so far. And then Wolfsburg is always a team that you don't know. What's the team that I have not mentioned yet? Augsburg. I never know what to say about Aug Augsburg. They... For me, they always feel like a relegation candidate, but they are not quite there. They're actually uh, too solid to be a, a proper relegation candidate. So I would assume that Augsburg will just so survive, but it has a little bit of the gray mouse image. And I think I mentioned Gladbach is a team that I think is fundamentally flawed, but somehow still get their results. So uh, rather, rather, cu uh, rather, rather curious. So I, I would say let's look at the results from the past week weekend because they actually tell us something. I mean, uh, Kern won one 
Uh, Salvage a draw probably could have lost against Augsburg is exactly what I said about, about Augsburg. Gladbach had a 3-1 lead at Freiburg. And Freiburg pulled it back to 3-3 with a last-minute pan penalty. Uh, Leverkusen completely dominating in Hoffenheim, heading a 2-0 half, 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 half them lead. Hoffenheim then out of nowhere pulled it back. Uh, I, 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 it was a mistake by the Leverkusen goalie um, uh, Radetzky that uh, was then taken from a, a goal far out and then um, from a hit, hitting me post just a minute later, Vejos does as well, but then um, it's again um, Grimaldo who uh, get then the, the winner. Florian Wirtz get, uh, opening a scoring. Florian Wirtz, I mean, I have, haven't mentioned, but his goal that he scored on the past weekend, I think against Kainz Freiburg, it was just a wonder goal. Uh, better than Harry, 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 Harry Kane's, I would like. Um, Mainz, their coach, uh, just stepped down and they respond with a deserved 2 0 over Le Leipzig. Really, really odd. Eintracht Frankfurt deepened the, tr uh, the tr uh, problems for Union Berlin. Frankfurt is fine, finding form. And then uh, it is. I never think that Dortmund can beat Bayern. Dortmund Bayern, at least in Munich, has always been a uh, one very lopsided result. That they now lose four 0 at home, and especially in the first half, not showing. I mean, the way that the first goal came, where uh, um, Schlotterbeck is with Upamecano completely forgets about him, and after four minutes already one one in Bayern, and Harry Hurricane just taps one in after nine, and then Bayern are are, are cruising, and Harry Kane laid on, adding two more. Again, his tally is really great. Bayern really showing good stuff. The only one that's a little bit annoyed it, at the moment is Thomas Tuchel because the critics in uh, Ger Germany, and namely Didi Hamm and Lothar Matthäus, um, kind, he didn't like what is being told that he seemingly has no uh, chemistry with the team. And yeah, he was a little bit bitter. Let's put it, put it that, that way. Uh, I didn't see much of the sound against Wolfsburg 2-2 against Bremen. Um, yeah, I think it's a, a point one for Bremen and Heidenheim 2-0 over Stuttgart. I said Stuttgart had the chance uh, to take the lead, uh, to, uh, lead through a penalty and then Heidenheim get the two goals. So currently we have the standings as follows. Uh, Leverkusen and Bayern, as we said, up top, then Stuttgart and Dortmund. Stuttgart is not expected to stay in there, and I actually think they will probably regress to, to the mean. More mid-table finish, although I really would wish that Stuttgart kick into, uh, into the next gear, gear again. They have now lost 200, 200 pounds. Maybe they can get back into winning ways and maybe make a European finish, which I think would be great for that particular team. Uh, the plastic clubs Leipzig and Hoffenheim make 5-5-6 five, five and six with Eintracht, as I said, 4-5-1 right behind them. I think the midfield is somewhere between Freiburg and Heidenheim, but it's too early or saying that on on the bottom. Uh, three teams that have been relatively good over the past few years in Union Berlin, Mainz and Köln. Uh, look out. I, I really hope that Köln will uh, stay in uh, as I do for Union Berlin because I think those two teams have really enriched the league. Uh, at the moment, Köln in the relegation spot is still Heidenheim and Darmstadt um, seen as they are really two teams that are not very fancied. And I can very well imagine that one of them surviving. Uh, similar to as we always didn't fancy Augsburg and Augsburg stay in all the time. Up top Bayern still very much the top favorites. But Leverkusen keep on rising, rising, rising. They're now ahead of Dortmund. Let's see if they can keep it up. I have a feeling about them a little bit like Arsenal last season. The Premier League and the end Bayern Munich will again win it. Uh, I give you also the upcoming round. Uh, Stuttgart against Dortmund is a really interesting tie. We also have Leverkusen against Union Berlin. And Leipzig Freiburg, a replay of a uh, uh, German Cup final and a German Cup semi final. Bayern Heidenheim, there was a cup game 5 4 in there that was also really interesting. And then bottom table, Bochum against Köln, that's some prime time and will make for relatively rough watching. Said a lot of cup. Let's look at the cup results. There are a few uh, selections. We had Stuttgart against Union Un Berlin. That went one way. Uh, we had Wolfsburg ousting twice defending champions Leipzig. We had Gladbach 3 1 over Heidenheim. So there's another Bundesliga team out. And Kaiserslautern 3 2 over Köln um, in a very traditional duel. But Kaiserslautern also uh, make, make it to the next round. Dortmund beat Hoffenheim. Freiburg losing 3 1 at home to Paderborn was one of those results that no one expected. But then, you know, Le Leverkusen at least make it. Hertha, very easy 3 0 win over Mainz, which meant that. Um, 
Mainz coach resigned. Uh, I want to go to the bottom with Frankfurt 2 0 over Victoria. Köln was not an easy uh, win for them at all, but the big one, of course, is Saarbrücken against Bayern, where Thomas Müller gave Bayern a 1 0 lead. And then they just thought they can cruise. Yes, there was no Harry, Harry Kane playing. They kind of sh uh, sh sh shook it up a little bit, but it's not a bad team playing. Saarbrücken get an equalizer just before the halftime whistle. And then it was actually Bayern create, uh, dominating the possession, everything left and right, without creating many great change chances. But it seemed like it's inevitable that it's coming. What was coming is that in the 95th minute, Saarbrücken launch a count, 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 and completely catch Bayern off guard. And it's a 2-1 win. Famous win for them. And so Bayern already out of the cup. It's an embarrassment, but uh, and they would expect uh, to win the cup. But on the other side, maybe it's more competition, less to worry about. But the signs are not good for Tuchel at this uh, rate if he keeps on losing in the cup. We also have the draw, which will be played early December. And some really interesting ties in there. Most importantly, on the bottom, Stuttgart against Dortmund. Uh, also note that there are more second league teams in there than there are Bundesliga teams. And we have also quite a few Bundesliga duos with Klappach against Wolfsburg and Stuttgart against Dortmund. Leverkusen seem like the odds on favorites at the moment. We have a great uh, second Bundesliga clash between Hertha and Hamburg, uh, also Kassel Lautner against Nürnberg, that sounds like Bundesliga. Uh, also note that Hamburg and Saarbrücken are all about the same region, Hamburg play, uh, hosting St. Pauli and Saarbrücken having to host Eintracht Frankfurt. So this was it, a few thoughts from the German Bundesliga so far. Let me know how you like this type of video, give me a thumbs up if you did so. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more ra roundups uh, from the big leagues and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon, so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!